Tell me if it's easier to do a period piece when it's such a contemporary character. Um, no, I'd say it'd be more difficult because you tend to go back and rely on the crutches that are contemporary. I mean, she, she was a woman ahead of her time in a time where you weren't allowed to be that. Um, you, you know, and me being such a contemporary and such a 90s chick, you know, you have to remove everything that's familiar and keep it internal. If you feel it, you can't express it. And um, here comes this young, passionate, wild person who evoked everything that she was trying to keep at bay and just it, it took her over. So uh, I think it was probably a million times harder to do it, you know, rather than having the guidelines of saying, you, you know, this is what you can't do, but she was allowed to feel it but not show it. Now, are you more attracted to the tragic love yeah. story? Oh, absolutely. That to me is always far more interesting because it never came into fruition. It, it was something that will forever, it uh, probably molded her for the rest of her life and as they say, molded him. It's the one thing that she probably, you can't ever put to rest because it was left at the most alive place that she knew. It was the only time that she felt, that, you know, seemingly that amount of passion. So much so that, you know, she had to shut it down. Now, were you a fan of Hemingway before? Well, we all, you know, were forced to read Hemingway in school, and I think we're forced to read him long before we're able to understand him. And um, I felt the same way. You know, someone said earlier, did you go for the Cliff Notes? I probably did. <laughs> uh, and then going back to Farewell to Arms, after having done the film, you know so much about, or I knew so much about the person that formed and shaped the man that you have such a better understanding, and you're so drawn to what he's saying, even though before he was so blatant and rough and... and you know, almost barbaric sometimes in his writing, you totally understand it and get it, can appreciate it and embrace it. Whereas in, you know, please, ninth grade, like, you can understand Hemingway. <laughs> I know. Nietzsche, here, read this. So do you have, like, a whole shelf of, like, Hemingway? Are you planning to get more into his novels No, I now? mean, I was a Steinbeck reader, you know. I mean, that's what I read at that time. Um, but it was also easier to read. Uh, I now... I'm fascinated, and you know, here I am, I'm working down at Key West, and what is that about? The Hemingway house. Everything was Hemingway, so I felt like I was just finishing Love and War, and here I am in the place that he lived, and you felt Hemingway there everywhere. So I'm so aware of, of him in that time, and what he, he changed in literature, and in, um, you know, this woman's life. I just, I feel so sad. You know, you just feel a great sense of, of tragedy. It was so bittersweet, you know, I felt for these two people. And tell me what... Chris O'Donnell brought to this project? Oh my god. Chris, um, as his friend and as his co-worker, the, the greatest joy was to sit there and watch what he was becoming. You know, Hemingway the boy to the man, but also Chris. And knowing how much um, he was giving and putting into this and how much he had to let go of things that he felt safety with. It was absolutely beautiful. And um, I, I just, I admire him a great deal. I admire him because he doesn't know how talented he is. He doesn't know what gift he has. He has very strong morals and very strong ideals for what he wants for his life. And it, um, being around him reconfirms what you want and what you don't want for yourself. And you see someone that strong in his laurels, you just, um, you can't help but just admire the man. I, I admire him a thousand times more than when I stepped into it, you know. And then quickly, what are you working on now? Speed 2. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> it's fast. No, <laughs> it's we're on the, we're in the island, so that's a good thing. We've turned into island babies, but um, it is uh, it is so scary and so wild and so physical and so something I've never done before in my life that uh, if I just make it through alive, that'll be the best thing. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.